Hi. But I have uh, Rhino developing courses on the Teachable platform. Hi. C Sharp and C++ together with some explanations of C Sharp. And if you go uh, to the Teachable website, the link will be down below, of course. You will be able to start the course, course for free, like, hi, introductory level where you can set up your plugin for Rhino. So without further ado, hi, this is the second video in that series. Enjoy. Before we go on to making your first plugin, let's talk very shortly about what a plugin is. You can easily skip this video if you already know what a plugin is or you're not interested in the details. But if you are, this will only take a minute or two. People from Rhino will help us with the description. They say um, a Rhino plugin is a software module that extends the functionality of Rhino or Grasshopper by adding commands, features uh, or capabilities. A Rhino plugin is a dynamic link library or DLL. I do talk a bit about DLLs in my C++ and C Sharp basic lessons, so you can check those out. But generally speaking, DLL is a, just a set of classes and functions that your main software can call and execute. Imagine you're on a quiz show and you brought a friend with you that has certain knowledge in a specific area. So whenever you need answers that he knows, you would ask him and get that information. A plugin or any DLL is a friend with a set of information and routines they know and they can execute different tasks for you. On Windows and Mac, a Rhino plugin built with the Rhino Common SDK is also called a Net Assembly. Examples of Rhino plugins include Grasshopper, Brazil, Flamingo, or any of my plugins from the Eve series, for example. See foodforrhino.com for more. For Rhino to successfully load and run your plugin, several conditions must be met. The Rhino SDK version number of your plugin must match the Rhino SDK version of Rhino. Uh, the Rhino SDK service release number of Rhino must be greater than or equal to the Rhino SDK service release of your plugin. Now, Rhino occasionally makes changes to their SDKs. When they do, they change the Rhino SDK service release number. You may, however, occasionally encounter problems with the second condition. Rarely, but it's possible. If you compiled your plugin using the 6.2 uh, Rhino SDK service release, and the user running a 6.1 Rhino tries to run it, they will get an error message and the plugin will refuse to load. If your customer gets this message, they just need to get the latest Rhino. Just update Rhino. Could be 6.2 or greater in this example. And that should resolve the problem. You just have to update Rhino and if you go to check for updates, you can do that in a fairly automated way. That said, you will hear a lot of people talking about programming using the word scripting. That does not apply to what we are trying to do here. Again, depending on when you are watching these videos, check out if I, my classes on Rhino scripting are out. Uh, there you will learn how to script without going into specifics because that makes no sense at this, at this point. But with scripting, you usually write code to do some small tasks. You do it in a safe environment of an editor that is usually provided by your software. In our case, Rhino gives you an editor to script in Python or Visual Basic Script. Your code is then interpreted. It has to be translated into a lower language, which makes scripts much, much slower than compiled code, like a plugin. And if you want to do something slightly complicated, you will have a hard time, especially if you want to start using dialogues, etc. But there are cases where fast scripting makes sense. And that is why I will, or I already did, make lessons on Python scripting for Rhino. Now, Let's create our first plugin. So you have Rhino installed and running the proper version of Visual Studio and with an installed Rhino common template, which will help you set up your plugins. That's all we need. Let's start by writing your first very simple Hello World Rhino plugin. If you're not familiar, Hello World is a common first step in learning any programming language. Once we do that, we will analyze everything you need to know about a plugin, at least everything you need to know for now. Some things we will leave for later. Okay, so what I will do here, I will prepare a new folder on the desktop where we will hold our project. You can do the same. I will call it PA, as in Pro Architect, C Sharp Level 1. So this will be our folder. There you see I have the C++ course as well. So what we can do now is open our Visual Studio 2017 in my case. And after all the installations have gone well, what you will be able to do is simply go to File, New Project. And 
if you go to your Visual C Sharp and Rhinoceros, you will be able to see that you can actually build a Rhino Common plugin. So this is again the new project setup and on the left side if you go to Visual C Sharp you should see Rhinoceros. If you do not see it then something went wrong with the installation and you have to go and repeat some of the previous ste steps. So let's type the name of the project. We said we will call it PACC Sharp 1. You can call it however you want, enter a different name, but you do not start with a number and do not use spaces. And of course you cannot use special characters. You can, you can use numbers, but do not start with numbers. Uh, and the wizard will use this project name when it creates all the files and classes, and I will show you that in a minute. And do not forget to change the location to store your project. In our case, I made a folder uh, on the desktop for convenience, but you can do that wherever you want. So I will select this folder and you can check here to create an additional folder for your solution and this is optional depending on how you want to structure your projects. If I check this, it, it will enter this, uh, this folder here and then add additional folder called PA C Sharp uh, 1 and then inside all this folder all our files will be. This is your choice. When you click OK, you will see the new Rhino um, common plugin dialog. And for now, you should be more than fine accepting the defaults, which you will do in 95, if not 99% of the cases. But let's just skim over the obvious stuff and leave something for later. There are some basic classes that the wizard will create for you. And the name of the plugin that you put uh, before is integrated here, as you can see, PA C Sharp 1, and then with the added plugin. And in principle, there is no reason to change this, and I wouldn't change it if I was you, if I were you. We will uh, have a special command class name that we'll be use, we're using for our commands again. In the future, you might want to change this no reason now. And we will choose a general utility plugin because that is what will be covered in this class, at least in the level one. If you s click on show more options, you will see there are some. I will just give you a brief, brief uh, explanation. General utility is the general purpose plugin that can contain one or more commands, which is what you want in 99% of the cases. Sometimes you will want a special plugin that's, uh, that's uh, created to uh, import different files, import data from other file formats into Rhino. Sometimes you will want to uh, export different data from Rhino to other file formats. And then you have custom rendering and digitizer plugins, which uh, renderings, you know, as you know, applies materials, textures and lights to a scene. You can make your own rendering plugin. And digitizing is uh, for some interfacing with 3D digitizing devices, which we will not go into now. If you remember, I told you that Rhino Common DLL is the main library you have to reference. And uh, if this path here is not correct, and it should be because uh, these DLLs should be in the Rhino system file, you might have to change it. But this will almost never be the case. You can press the three dots here and see if it is there. If it theoretically it is not, you will have to find it. Here is the path and my DLL is actually there. So if you do have to find it, just go where, to where your Rhino is installed and it's, it's in its system folder, it should be there. The path to Rhino should also be recognized, as you can see. It is also in the system folder and if you do not see it for some reason, then just find it manually. Now we can click finish. And you see the plugin generated some files for you, some code for you, and we will get to know this as we go along. Now we will move on uh, into building your project. You need to know that every code needs to be linked and compiled. If you watch my basic programming language classes, C Sharp in this case, I explain this principle there shortly. Now you can simply do that by going to here to build. And here you have build solution and uh, a build, build project, which in your case is called PA C Sharp. One, I will explain uh, in a moment the difference between those two. And you can also, also debug by pressing F5 or pressing start here. I will talk about both of those things in a moment. If you press play and start to debug, what you will see is that Rhino will uh, launch and create a new empty Rhino model. 
since this is the first time you're running the uh, your plugin what you will need to do is actually install it the rhino common tab template has set things up so when you compile the solution an rhp file is compiled in the bin subdirectory of the project directory so i will minimize this to show you shortly and go into our folder where our project is saved as i told you before there is an additional one now because we created an additional one and then here is our solution and here is our project again you can enter the project and in the bin folder will be your uh, plugins what you will see is that we have a rhino plugin which is the rh uh, rhp file generated for us and this is the plugin that we have to install if we want to use even if, if in our debug version what you can do is you can go uh, to the tools options and go to plugins or you can simply write here plugin manager and it will do that for you it will open rhino options and go directly to plugins what you will want to do is install go to your desktop to your project until you find the bin folder and the plugin file now that you have opened your file and installed it now you don't have to redo this again until you add some new commands as you will uh, see now remember how our command was called when we generated a folder we first gave a name to our command and if you are here by default in the command file which is called with the name of your plugin plus command unless you changed it this is the name of our command pa c sharp one so if i go to rhino and try to actually write pa c sharp one command you can see it is actually there i can uh, execute it and you will see it asks for me to select a start point and to select to select an end point why does it do that well because when you use the plugin wizard and create the plugin it gives you some default code which is this here and we will go through it shortly and i'll explain to you this file and the command but just not to get confused this code was provided to you by the wizard and it does exactly that it, it prompts the user to select a start point as you see select the end point and simply draws uh, a line now what we can do is either close the rhino here to stop the debugging session or simply press stop here and the rhino will close close and go back to visual studio if you got to this point then you have everything set up and everything works 